Y'all, guess who it is? Guess who it is? Oh my gosh, it's Troy Reads. Did you expect that? I honestly attempt some sort of kind of humor towards the beginning of my videos and it never works, so. <laughs> but today, guys, my name is Troy. Welcome back to my booktube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and experiencing my March wrap-up. No, 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 no. My April wrap-up video. So this video is going to be a wrap-up of all the books that I read in April. I read 11 books in April, which is only which is only half of the books that I wanted to read this month because I set a goal for 20 books in April and I only read 10. I literally, I literally read 11. 11. So you know what? I think this video deserves a share for that valiant effort of myself. Yee! I'm like the goal failer, like that's what you should call me. Yeah, I just did not read as much as I planned because I was very stressed and stress makes reading go bye bye. So I did do a lot of reading, I just didn't do as much as I intended. Yeah, so yeah, I'll be going over the 11 books that I read this month. I'll get you guys more of a life update on the stress and stuff next video, but right now I just want to go on the March wrap up. So we're gonna go over the top 11 thing book that I read, let's just go into it, like, subscribe, share. All right, bye guys. <laughs> so the first book that I read in April was The Twits by Roald Dahl. Y'all know how much I love Roald Dahl. <laughs> you can see by the size of the like the spine that this is a very small book. And so this was actually for the Magical Readathon for the prompt Shrinking Solution, which was book under 150 pages. This book is 76 pages. It is so quick. I finished this in like 45 minutes. It's like such a quick book. And this book is all about this kind of like old couple that over the years turned so mean and grumpy that they've just become so ugly ugly and they're just I guess you know really just mean and cruel married couple that are constantly playing pranks at each other and so the whole first half of the book is them just playing pranks on each other and then the second half of the book is like the animals all team up with each other to defeat the twits because they're just being such old bums yeah this book is just a really quick book it's really funny like it's not that like it's not like cruel in a way or like dark it's just like a fun it's like supposed to be it's like in a light manner and it's just like all fun like the pranks are all kind of like fun like there's one like at, and you see in the cover like they're, they're trying to stretch the woman it's just it's not like not like mean or anything it's just kind of um a funny book and I really do enjoyed it it's just a really quick read really fun read I really enjoyed it and I love these like little um illustrations throughout the book those were really fun to just read about and just a fun little quick road doll book because road doll is an amazing author Okay, so the next book I want to talk about is The Raft by S.A. Bodine. I think this is the third book I read. No, the second book that I read in April. And this book is basically a survival kind of contemporary book where Robbie, the main character in this book, is flying back to her home island. She was in Honolulu because she normally lives on an island. But when she's flying back, her plane crashes and she is thrown outside of the plane alongside Max. And they two have to survive floating on a raft basically. And we watch as Robbie kind of spirals into madness and it's just kind of how someone affected in the situation could become when they're in thrown in the situation. So like, I just really enjoyed the aspect that was like, you know, you're not gonna be completely fine when you're just thrown out of a plane left to die. And it's like, I like how this book reflected on that, how Robbie literally became crazy and, and started like making all these like weird things in her head and like hallucinating. Like it's a big deal to go through something like that. And I'm glad that the book kind of like went over that. Like it was a little more of like a emotional story than actually like a survival story, which I really enjoyed. And then I just really enjoyed kind of like the survival aspect but yeah this book is really good I really enjoyed it it is kind of weird with the whole mind thing but I think it made the book a lot better so yeah definitely go check it out if you're interested the raft by S.A. Bodine okay so the third book that I read in April was Welcome to Superhero School by Gracie Dix and this book was an arc sent to me by the author so thank you again Gracie Dix but yeah anyways um this book is basically about this group of superhero schools that go to a superhero school what did I just say? This is a, about a group of superhero friends that go to a superhero school who all of a sudden get recruited on this mission to defeat the evil organization Vork. And there's a lot of complications within that, so I don't really want to explain because this book is very complicated, but this book was all about like defeating this organization, using powers, and also a lot of friendship themes. And it was just a really light and fun book. I will say that I did not enjoy the beginning. I was just really questioning it and I didn't see like a plot, but it took me a while to get used to because when I did start to really love it, like 
like it was an amazing book and like I don't know I'm not like a huge fan of superheroes but like I feel like Gracie did it in such just a just with the book and just as such a great way it's just like always using these really cool powers and like I feel like Gracie was so creative and like just kind of like all these different relationships with the powers like some powers like could be blocked or stopped by the evil organization i just feel like gracie really did a great job with fleshing out the plot okay i, I don't even know what i'm doing let's go to the next book all right so the next book that i read was harry potter and the sorcerer's stone by jk rowling which is the first book in the harry potter series yep i started the harry potter series again in April and I read quite a few of the books so here's the first one which is all about Harry Potter becoming a wizard like if y'all don't know what Harry Potter is I'm sure you do but Harry Potter lives in this cupboard under this very like strict parents or like step parents or uncle uncle and uncle the aunt and uncle and basically what happens is Harry finds that he's a wizard and he can escape his parents or his I'm just gonna call them his parents. Um, he can escape his really abusive and strict parents and go to this magical world called Hogwarts. And Harry Potter actually realizes that he is like one of the most famous wizards for defeating the evil figure named Voldemort when he was a baby. I mean, he didn't even know that he did it. And so there's just like, he's famous. He goes to this like really cool school. It's just like a really magical fun book. And there's also a problem in this book, like all books do, in that Voldemort is trying to come back alive and take the Sorcerer's Stone to to restore himself and basically what's happening is harry potter has to stop that this book is really good um i love the hogwarts i love the whole wizarding world like the first book is just so nostalgic so good like you can see how many times it's been read just an amazing amazing story and i love the introduction to the world and it just gets better throughout the series so yeah next book so the next book is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. And this is the second book in the Harry Potter series. And this is also the most scary book. Ah! But in the second book, um, I'm going to do my best not to spoil, like, but there is a murder at Hogwarts. So this is like the second year of going to Hogwarts. And this year is all about this like mysterious murder that's like turning people into stone. And like, that's all. That's all I'm going to say. There's like this secret murder. And a lot of the book is like trying to find out who it is and stop them. And so this book was a little bit more scary than the first one. But still, guys, Hogwarts is just such an amazing place to read from. It's such an amazing setting. It's so cozy. Like Hogwarts is just so magical magical and so fun and like I don't know what I would do without my Hogwarts. Um, I just love the magic, love the setting, love the creatures, love everything about this book except that scary aspect and I don't know it's just a, such a fun read. I read this really quickly too. I think that's all I gotta say. These are going by quick. I'm going by my descriptions fast. Okay so the next book that I read is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling and again this is the third book in the Harry Potter series which I just read right after the second book and again I'm not going to spoil anything. So the main premise of this book is that there's a murderer, Sirius Black, that would escape from the wizarding prison with the wizard with the, the wizarding prison of Azkaban and is now looking to murder Harry Potter because he, in his sleep he's saying like he's at Hogwarts, he's at Hogwarts. And so yeah, there's this whole interesting dynamic where like Harry Potter isn't even safe at Hogwarts because in all the other books Harry has always felt safe at Hogwarts and he's been, you know, perfectly fine and like cuz he thought like Dumbledore would be there and stuff, but this book he is not safe and it's just a really interesting tension within the story that he's like oh my gosh like I'm at Hogwarts but I know someone's after me and so there's just like a really interesting aspect and as always in any Harry Potter book I really like Hogwarts I feel like I'm gonna say that for every little Harry Potter book but Hogwarts is such an amazing and magical adventure and I love reading and experiencing it the magic was really good and I have to admit the ending of this book was really good I can see why a lot of people think this is their favorite because the ending is like 100 pages long and it's just amazing like I guess a lot of the books end in like kind of like a fight scene or like a big reveal and this one was just kind of really amazing like it was it was just so all over the place and so crazy so imaginative so creative and I really liked it all right let's get on to the next book Okay, so the next book that I read in April was A Hoot by Carl Hyazen, if y'all can see that. And this book was really good. I've read this actually a couple of times. This was a reread. This book is kind of like an environmentalistic book. I feel like actually a lot of Carl Hyazen's books are in a more like pro-environment feel and I really like that because I'm all for like protecting the environment. Like that is something that I really like to do in the future like as a job, like being an environmentalistic engineer or something. And so yeah, I really enjoyed this book. It's a basically a about these kids who are trying to save a group of owls because what's happening is there's this construction site for a pancake house and in order to construct that they would be burying a lot of owls homes 
and that would be destroying so many owls and so the kids are trying to you know stop the construction from happening and there's this whole kind of like crime and vandalization like aspect that goes on and it's just really fun to see like how they protect the owls and it just has a really good message i really enjoyed this book the characters are really really good just the overall tone made me made me feel so happy when i was reading it which is a good thing it just has like that happy like kind of middle grade tone like you know you know what i'm talking about like you just feel happy when you're like reading it and it's just really a really fun book hoot 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 very intriguing book all right, let's go into the next one. Okay, so the next book that I read is Hatchet by Gary Paulson. I feel like this is a very well-known read. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, this is a contemporary survival classic, and I read this actually for the genre I don't like, which is classic, and I read a classic. Okay, I don't even know what I'm saying. So yeah, this is Hatchet. This is a survival story. Brian is going to his dad's for the summer. His parents are divorced, and that's kind of like a key thing about the book. And he's going to his parents. He's flying in this like private jet. All of a sudden, the pilot is like starts to seize up. He starts to have a heart attack. Brian has to be in control of the plane, so he lands in a clearing, and he has to survive on his own. It's a really, really good story, and I feel like just like the thoughts, and just like the kind of relaxation of it all, and just like the pureness. Ah, oh, the pureness. Oh, you're pure, you're pure, you're pure. This book is so pure. It's just so blissful and it's just like has a lot of emotion and it's like real like it's realistic like you see all these survival books be like hey we just found treasure like no this boy has to struggle all his things are taken from him multiple times he is hurt multiple times this is the realness of the survival and it's just a really interesting journey to see brian go through all these obstacles and start to become a man of the wild it was very inspirational so yeah this book is a really good book yeah <laughs> all right not an instant next one okay so the next book that i read was harry potter and the goblet of fire by jk rowling which is the fourth book in the legendary harry potter series um again i'm not going to dive too deep into the i guess spoilers i'm not actually not doing any spoilers but i'm just going to say the premise of this book is that there is a new event happening at hogwarts that's just that hasn't happened in like a hundred years and it's just the first thing to come to Hogwarts and Harry is participating in it. That's all I'm gonna say. But I will say that the whatever the event was so fun to read about. This is by far my favorite Harry Potter book and it's just so magical. And I feel like in this book, Harry Potter starts to age. So it's just good starts to get a lot more relatable. For I think he's 14 or 15 during this time. So he's a lot closer to my age. So, you know, it's just a lot more relatable and it's just so fun. Like the event that's happening at Hogwarts, the teachers, the characters, the events, the plot, everything I just really, really, really loved it's just such a quick read too even though it's like 750 pages i read this so quick in like three days it's a 750 page book i read actually most of it i read 400 pages of it in one night so yeah you can just tell how much i love this book and i really do love like the villainry in this one and the evil i feel like it was all just tied together so well and again i just really love this book it's just such a great one okay the one thing that i do love about this book is that it brings in wizardings and like wizarding establishments from other countries like previous books we were just focusing on the london Harry Potter group and wizards in London but um now we're experiencing more diversified wizarding groups and cultures and all that stuff so it's really cool I guess if you haven't read the Harry Potter series you got to because this is a good book <laughs> the second to last book that I read this month was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget and I feel like I've talked about this in the last three videos or something like that. So I'm just gonna cut this really short. And if you haven't watched my other videos, I'm just gonna be very quick about this. This book is about two characters, Ren and Harper. Ren is a fallen prince who is struggling to regain his political power while also being in this curse where every year he has to take a girl and try to make him make them make the girl love him and then harper is one of those girls that's kidnapped into the world and she has to help ren save his kingdom and also break the curse while also battling the tension of her mom and her brother being in serious trouble back at home because her mom is dying and her brother is in deep crime troubles. So there's a lot of tension, a lot of good stuff in this book. Again, I've talked about this in my last two videos, so I don't want to bore you guys, but this book is so good. The characters are amazing. The settings are so, mm. And <laughs> the book gets as better, better, better as it goes on. Like I didn't really like it towards the start, but towards the middle, it got better and better and better. And by the end, I was screaming. Like this book is so good, y'all. Gotta pick it up, A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. 
and then I think the last book that I read this month was Magnus Chasing the Gods of Asgard with the, 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 the second book of that which is The Hammer of Thor by Rick Riordan which is a boss and the Magnus Chase series is so underrated so go read it it's like better than Percy Jackson so yeah anyways what was I saying is this book is the continuation of the first book of Magnus Chase where Magnus basically dies and <laughs> there's a bunch of Norse stuff that happens to him like he dies and he goes to this magical place called Valhalla where all the fallen warriors die because he died protecting citizens and so first book is this looks like crazy Norse mythology quest for like magical items and trying to stop this doomsday from happening and then in this book this is kind of like a continuation of the first one where the quest doesn't stop like there's a new threat that arises and doomsday is still on the horizon so basically Magnus Chase and his friends have to stop this book is all about the hammer of Thor like this book is about them trying to retrieve the hammer of Thor and stop total chaos from happening because Loki is like the evil person in this one I just really enjoyed like the magical adventure like these books are so 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 good like they go to all different kinds of worlds and there's so many different kind of settings and like different characters and different creatures and different species it's so so good and I love reading it and the humor and everything is just so perfect and pure and the Magnus Chase series is by far one of my favorite amazing series and y'all should definitely check it out but yeah this was a great installment in this series and it probably was as good as the first to be honest because the first was good but this had some really great moments in it as well all right I think that wraps up all the books I read this month if I'm mistaken I think that's all the books that I read this month okay guys I hope you enjoyed in this video if you did make sure to leave a like I had a great time going over the top 11 books that I read in April not top 11 just 11 because I'd only read 11 tier um and make sure to subscribe to my channel down below if you want more content like this we're almost at 850 subscribers make sure to comment down below what did you read during april yes i got it right this time and how is your life going what are your plans for may i might do like a may tbr or something but yeah i'm um, also give this video a share to help me out because like i'm losing my mind and i think that would really help me so you know if you want to help me in that way i would love to even copying the link that's gonna help me guys so <laughs> definitely do that and i think that's I have to say oh if you want to watch my last video it's my book recommendations for quarantine so click up in the this the gen, general area for that book video quarantine book recommendation fantasy book recommendation five fantasy book recommendation video all right i'm losing my mind i'm not even gonna continue recording like this is it bye guys love you so much have a great rest of your day and hopefully i'll get like a better video out to you next video so yeah i'll see you then on wednesday love you guys so much bye